Hello, my name is Girish and I'm going to demonstrate one of the new features of Qt 4.5 which is the support for XSLT. Um, XSLT for those of you who don't know uh, helps in converting one XML document to another. Um, what I'm going to show you now is an example where I convert XML into HTML and display the HTML using WebKit. Let me first start the application. Uh, the application is called Twitter View. Uh, it's asking me for my username and password, so I'm going to try logging in. Twitter provides an API by which you can get information about the user and the user's friends, followers and, the me and your messages. What the application does is that it uses this API, gets the information from Twitter, converts this information and shows it in WebKit. Um, so it ca uh, you can see all my messages right now. I can click on the links on the left. So for example, if I click on me, I see messages from only me. I can click on everyone. And it shows me messages from the public. I also have the list of my friends. Um, the images of the friends are on the left, which you see as these small icons. I can click on any of them uh, to see their messages. Uh, for the followers, I decided that I will not show the text, I will not show their names. This is because I expect to have a lot of followers since you know I'm all the rage. Um, but what you can do is that you can hover over the small images and you can see their names. I can also click on any of these images. So for example, uh, I right now clicked on Henrik. Um, it shows me the messages from Henrik. The messages are also formatted in such a way that it underlines uh, the users to which the messages are responding to. So for example, in the message here, Henrik is responding to Jesper. And Jesper is actually a link. So I can click on Jesper and I can follow through and see Jesper's images. One of the other things you might have noticed is that the images of the followers are of different sizes. This is because what I've done is the size of the images depend on the number of followers they in turn have. So for example, Henrik appears here much bigger than let's say Mike here because Henrik has more followers than Mike. So this is the application, so let's have a look into how this is actually done in code. Uh, as I said, Twitter provides an API by which we can get information out of Twitter. Uh, you can get uh, re responses back in JSON or in XML. For this example, I've used XML. Uh, let's take an example schema. Um, when I ask information about a user, uh, the API says that I will get a tag root tag called user and under user I'll have all these elements. So for example, I can query the background color using profile background color. I also get the image using the profile image URL. Uh, notice here that this Twitter page might actually look very different for you. This is probably because you configured different um, uh, background images and colors in Twitter for yourself. So what we can do is we get this XML as a part of, um, we get this XML response. Let's see how the query itself is created. It's really simple to create an XSLT query. Uh, there is a class called XML query and this was already introduced in Qt 4.4 um, and this initially only supported xquery 2.0 but right now we can pass this enumeration which indicates that what we want is an XSLT query. We set the input to be the XML which is received from Twitter. We set the query to be the XSL which we would like to apply. XSL is the transform which I am applying. And I can evaluate the output to an IO device or a string or a string list or whatever I like. In this case, I have just evaluated it to a, bu uh, to a buffer. And this buffer is basically the output HTML after the transformation. And I just do set HTML of the, of the output. 
Uh, note that Twitter view itself is actually just a cube web view, um, which is why set HTML works. Let's have a look at this Twitter view dot XSL. Um, XSLT is just a XML document. Uh, this is the standard template stuff where you um, have the XSL namespace defined and so on. This is just basically just a normal HTML document. What we can do is that in the HTML document, so for example here, I want to define the background color for the body. What I do is I pick it up from the input HTML. As we saw here in the Twitter API, um, the tag actually appears under user and under user it is under profile background color. So what I do is I create a template which matches by user and I then select the profile background color. To pick up the background image, I do the same. I just pick up another tag. Uh, XSL is, uh, XSLT is actually very powerful. Uh, you, you have the if statements, select statements, uh, which can help you define uh, more logic. So for example here, uh, Twitter tells me whether the background needs to be tiled or not. So I check the value of profane background tile and then I set the background repeat CSS property to be repeat or no repeat. Another thing which I would like to show you is how I actually generate different image sizes for the followers. Um, one of the nice things about all these, uh, all the lists here, for example the friends list, followers list, is that these lists are created dynamically. Uh, so they are inserted into the HTML dynamically using WebKit. So back to what I was mentioning about running through followers.xsl. Um, what I do here is essentially that I define an image tag. I define an image tag for each of the followers and they have the width which is set to a minimum of 20 but a maximum of 50 depending on their follower count. So you can see that the width actually varies depending on the number of followers the user has and the same applies for the height and this entire HTML is just a list. So it, this is just a HTML, this XSL creates a HTML fraglet which is a list of images and this list of images is inserted into the main HTML dynamically. And that's about it. Thank you.